discussed about the criteria you guys would, would have to you know decide on and buying and selling just ultimately what led you kind of to the, the path that you guys took and, and maybe what was the turning point in that decision making process yeah. um, in a lot of ways they made it really easy you know, the way the team played uh, I think when you look at you know where we are in this season um, it's been an odd path for sure um, but I think it, you look at the way we played since really early June and we played you know great baseball uh, it's a cohesive group um, I feel like when you look at the underlying numbers, um, the team's even better than, than the record. Um, I think the fans have really responded to this group. And so, you know, for us, it was, you know, let's, um, let's do what you, you, you seek out at the beginning of every, you know, every uh, winter, which is like, let's keep the group together for, you know, six or seven months. And we were able, you know, we were able to, you know, make the decision to do that. We obviously were able to, to add candy to this mix, but um, I think it was a pretty easy decision uh, to keep this group together and, uh, let's hope we can keep playing the way we have for the last six or eight weeks and um, make it a really fun last two months. How difficult was it to um, decide what to do with the Stroman situation? Because if you look at both sides of it, there doesn't seem to be a real easy decision. Uh, no, I mean, listen, he a big part of why we're here is the way he pitched for the first you know, two and a half months or so. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's had some... You know, some struggles now, but certainly uh, guys have ups and downs all the time, and he really carried us for, for a period of time. And so, you know, the hope is that he gets back to that, certainly. But, um, you know, we're a, we are ultimately, um, I think, a run prevention team. I know our offense has been really good recently, but, um, you know, he's a huge part of that, and um, he's going to be a big part of what we're doing going forward. Can you point to the moment in the game where you're like, they've done enough for him? <laughs> I don't remember exactly the game. I will say that um, – you know, the comeback with the second game in against the White Sox, where we were, I think we were down seven two, and we came back and won. Um, and then obviously, um, my nights were all blurred together because I haven't slept. But um, the uh, the Talkman catch game, I mean, that, that was sort of like, okay, this is uh, this is a lot of fun. These guys are these guys are, you know, celebrating like it's a, a playoff game and um, and just doing so many great things together as a group. And so. Um, this sort of felt like when you when we won, you know, was six in a row uh, against the Cardinals in that stretch, and that, that was that was probably the turning point where you realize, like, you know, this this group um, believes in each other, and uh, it's definitely the right thing to do to, like I said, keep them together and uh, let them play the last two months. Chad, usually you hear teams talk about just concerned about themselves and what's inside the room, but in this case, did you look at the landscape of the National League and realize you need to be after Atlanta? It is a little bit wide open. There's a lot of teams that are probably in your category and give as good a chance as any if you can catch up a little. Yeah, you know, certainly there's a lot of years where um, you know, we're 53 and 53. There's a lot of years where that, that wouldn't have been good enough to make that decision, right? If you were in a division that had a team running away and the wild card was was way away from you, we might have made a different decision. So there's no question that, you know, where our division sits and where the wild card sits this year, you know, that was a big a big part of it for sure. Yeah, he was the best fit. I mean, we kind of looked at looked at the board and you know, looked at the guys we thought were realistically available. And, and you know, candidly, it was it's such a seller's market. Um, there was not not a ton of talent this year on the market when, you know, when we looked at it overall. And I think all the teams kind of felt that way when you talked to different executives that it was not um, a really robust market in a lot of ways. There was very few hitters that we felt like could really add something to this team. And Candy was the one guy that we felt like. Um, you know, switch hitter, you know, really good from the left side, um, can play both corners, you know, can DH for us some, uh, and just really give us a, a high quality bat uh, with good decision making. And that was, he was a really very clear target. Um, and like I said, there wasn't a lot of those out there. Um, yeah, it was, it was really a fascinating market to look at. And I think part of it was what Jesse's, you know, asked, which is that there wasn't, there was, there wasn't a lot of sellers on the market. There's a lot of teams in the race. Um, some of the, you know some of the other uh, sellers that already sold off a lot. So there, there wasn't a ton to, to be had. So um, he was the best bat we felt like on the market, and he was a really good fit for us. And I was, I was glad it worked out. It's, and it's amazing, like you know, looking back, just made me feel old or made me feel like time flies. That you know, getting him six years to the day after we traded him in a, in a deadline deal is uh, pretty unbelievable. As far as bullpen market, it, you just talked about wasn't really robust out there. How, 
we tried you know pretty hard and you know, we were I mean, definitely in on, on a lot of different guys but um you know not all deals come together i mean you know, candy was certainly the, the priority and the one we went after the hardest and were most aggressive on and you know, I'll give I'll give the scouts and the player development guys a lot of credit. You know, I do think we've worked amazingly hard the last few years to, to build up our farm system and, um, and to be able to give up you know talented guys, but also not sort of be also be able to protect sort of our, our top 10, 15 group was was incredibly important for us. And so, um, you know, the last couple of years of the deadline have helped that honestly. And so we've been able to to build up a farm system where we felt like we could make that kind of move for a rental. What does it feel last couple of years? No, it's, it's where you want to be. I mean, I think when we talked in, in um, spring training, the, the goal was like, can this group be competitive? And I think they're competitive for sure. I mean, I think they're a, a, a really qu- a good team. I think we've been, we've been you know, um, like I said, on paper, we're, uh, we've been a little better than our record. But I think, you know, when you watch the product on night in, night out, we do a lot of things really well. You know, we're among the, the top teams in offense right now. Uh, we've been a really good you know, run prevention team, uh, both pitching and defense. I mean, this team has a chance, I think, to – to come together and really win. And, and that's the goal when you leave spring training. So um, sitting here after selling um, is never the goal. Uh, now, certainly that said, um, it's often the right strategy. You know, when you're sitting in a situation where you're not going to compete for the playoffs and you have players that um, can really impact your future, uh, it's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, certainly as we sat here several weeks ago, we thought that was the path we were going to take, but uh, it's a much better feeling to be sitting here now having added and, and having been able to show that belief that we have in this group. What can you tell us about the two arms you did get? What's the plan for them? And just how important was it to just lengthen out the depth behind the big Yeah, you know, Quas is a guy that we had targeted for a bit. Um, you know, we, we like Nelson a lot, but we had um, a little bit of a, a log jam of right-hand hitters that, that weren't on the major league team. And so uh, we sort of traded some, some depth there for um, for a piece that we've, we've kind of targeted for a while and actually almost had – and a couple other deals. Um, and then Roberson, you know, the, the deal with Tampa, um, well, you know, it was a little bit complicated, but, you know, trading, some, you know, a, a couple arms um, and some international money for Roberson and, and some relief was uh, was important to us. So, um, you know, it's important to, to work on small deals as well as well as the big deals at the deadline. And, you know, we were all day today. We didn't get any deals done, but we were, you know, talking to everyone. And um, it's certainly a uh, – it's an enjoyable time to talk through those deals, and you know sometimes they come together. Today we were, you know, up until the you know last minutes, we were talking about a couple of deals that didn't quite come through. So you're always you know active, and I'm glad we got I guess three deals done. Did you feel close about anything? Did you feel close about anything today? That, that something was on the verge of happening? Not close. A lot of banter. No, nothing close. Yeah. I think more you can say about Roberson. Uh, you know, his stats aren't don't aren't eye popping or anything, but. Uh, no, he's a live arm. That, that, you know, certainly a live arm, and um, you know, I think we're, we're the guy that we're excited to get into our system and see what our guys can uh, can do with him. Jay, do you have concern that your bullpen is inexperienced in the roles they have, or after four months, even though it's not pennant race months, that you, you think you're you obviously must think you're okay? Yeah, I mean, I think our bullpen has, thro- has thrown much better. I feel like we had a that that period sort of going back to the the middle of May where. Um, it felt like uh, you know guys were struggling, guys weren't sort of weren't set in their roles, and it really feels like the, you know the coaching staff did a great job of getting guys in the right roles. And um, you know since then we've we've been a really good bullpen and with a number of guys throwing really well. And you know the hope is that we can continue to bring guys up. You know Palencia has done a really nice job since he came up. Obviously Assad's been fantastic. You know since he, uh, this last stretch, and so the hope is that we certainly can continue to bring some arms. You know, through the minors that we've developed, that can that can add, and you know, I hope not only now but also going forward, I hope that's the, that's the case where you know you, you want to be less reliant on outside stuff than than more. Now, you know, the price to to go get a rental rental reliever or even a, a controllable reliever this time of year is is often cost prohibitive, and so uh, to me, it, it's just kind of underscores the value of you know develop, developing those guys yourself. With the top prospects, if the record had been a little better, would there have been more willingness to? Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, candidly, I didn't feel like, um, you know, I, I kind of mentioned before it was a seller's market that, you know, there were, we felt like candy was, was in the best bat to go get. There weren't, you know, that, that kind of controllable bat that, I mean, if had that, 
kind of player or that kind of pitcher uh, been on this market where we felt really strongly about. Uh, certainly, we would have gone after them uh, pretty hard. But um, you know, when I think through the, the guys that, that changed hands. It was it was mostly it was mostly guys that were rentals, and uh, it, there weren't a lot of uh, you know controllable starters or controllable bats that, that changed hands. Uh, Candelario coming in, just what ultimately made now the time to, to DFA Trey and just conversations with yeah. him about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was mostly the lack of at-bats, you know. Um, I think, you know, we'll probably play Candy at both first and third. Um, I think Nick has done a great job at third, uh, really impressive defensively. Um, and I think we'll probably play Patrick some at first um, mm-hmm. against righties, against, excuse me, against lefties. So um, it just felt like the right time, you know. Um, he struggled with us. Now he probably wasn't going to get uh, many play appearances going forward. And, um, you know, it happens. You know, I think, uh, yeah, he's a great teammate. I think he, he worked really hard. And, uh, you know, sometimes guys come in and, you know, play above expectations. And in that case, this case, that didn't happen. And, um, you know, I wish him the best. But um, we just felt it was the right time, you know, given we we're going to play hard for two months and there wasn't going to be a, a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity. When you talk to other GMs, what do you find out about your own system and your own evaluation when they start asking about names that maybe sometimes – you're surprised to hear. Yeah. Well, I think the, what was kind of underscored is, is what we knew and what people talk about with our system is, is really deep. Um, so a lot of different names got asked about. Um, and I think that's really the strength of our system. And I think when you look at various publications, I think they would they would say that, that we have a, a lot of really good prospects. And, you know, one of the, you know, one of the challenges when you when you do have some depth is you can't protect everybody. You know, we have a forty man roster decision we have to make in uh, in November, and you know, uh, some of the guys we were talking about were not going to be able to be protected. And I think, you know, thinking back, you know, uh, a number of years, there was a bunch of organizations I always envied, you know, because they were able to make trades at the at the deadline and make trades in the winter to get guys they couldn't, you know, to um, get guys and they would use guys they, they couldn't protect. And I think, you know, we've gotten to that place where, um, you know, we're not able to protect um, some, of, some of our prospects that are talented. And, and when you when you have that situation, it's a really good time to make a trade. Um, so I think that we've worked on our depth. Uh, we've worked on the farm system. Our development staff has done a great job. And uh, we've put ourselves in a, in a good position. What do you think when um – Mike Rizzo says publicly there's eight teams interested in Candelario. Is he trying to get a better prospect out of you, or is it, does it impact you, know, you at all? Mike's, Mike's great. No, he's uh, – in general, um, I think this time of year, I, I, I refresh trade rumors a lot to see what's going on, but um, I also assume everyone's sort of playing, uh, you know, uh, playing the leverage game and, and uh, you know, the, the nice thing is I, I knew, you know, I knew Mike liked our prospects – um, and that really helped. And um, he's great to deal with. He's super direct. And uh, we were able to get to a deal. And he got he got two really talented guys. And, uh, you know, really, now, I mean, think about it from his standpoint, you know, um, they resurrected Candy, got him playing really well. Um, Candy's having a heck of a year because their coaching staff and, and Candy did a great job. And now he's able to get, you know, two good prospects for it. So that's a, it's a great, um, great outcome for the Nationals. You said it was a pretty easy decision to keep this group together the end but a couple weeks ago it could have been a pretty easy decision mm-hmm. to go the other way did you ever go back and forth a lot or how, how much pressure was on you to you know go to yeah and well it's a great question I mean I, I feel like there was there was a period where it looked like you know we were going to be going to be sellers I mean we were you know I think back to um we were seven under and we were playing the nationals and we're down three nothing and you know, it looked like we were going to drop to eight under, and we ended up scoring 17 that night, and then sort of didn't look back for a while. Um, but, you know, that was not very long ago. And so, yeah, at that point, it, it did look like there was probably – things were probably going, you know, in that direction. Um, it, the biggest focus we had was kind of waiting and letting it play out, you know, um, not uh, shortchanging the process by making a decision too early. You know, we, we, um, we waited – uh, I wanted to see how we played through the weekend in St. Louis, and you know, as we as we got closer, it became pretty clear what our direction was going to be. But we we still I still wanted to wait to get to that place where um, it felt like an obvious decision, and and uh, so we, you know that was sort of Sunday night. We're like, okay, let's we have after Sunday night, we knew we had forty eight hours to to make decisions, and we had decided our direction by that point. But that that was when it was obvious. So to answer your question in a more 
articulate way after not sleeping, but I would say that um, uh, part of part of that decision was waiting waiting as long as we could to let the team play and, and, and let them have that chance, and, and that was through Sunday. So weighing all these factors, how much did like the CBT play into maybe not adding someone today or kind of the direction yeah. that the league took, how did yeah. it shape itself? I mean, certainly it, it – it's a real factor, you know. Um, it's not a factor from a financial standpoint. It's a factor from, you know, a baseball standpoint that, you know, had there been a player that, you know, we felt like put us over the edge now and in the future, uh, certainly we go over the, the tax. And it's not, like I said, it's not a cost issue. It's really, you know, the number of baseball uh, things that impacts both now and going forward. Um, you know, didn't feel like there was that, that, that decision was there. So, um it had an impact, but it wasn't financial. It was more strategic. Like Mario, you mentioned Sorry. the bat, the defensive versatility, but you also referenced six years ago it was a mm-hmm. different situation. How much, when you bring in a player like that, does the past where he has familiarity with Pittsburgh, he saw a World Series run, like all of that play into how you think he could fit in with yeah. this team? Uh, it, it wasn't a huge factor, but it's a nice story. You know, I think that um, ultimately it was who he is as a player that, that – and what he does really well that, that made him a good fit. But um, it was certainly nice knowing the person. You know, I, I, I'd certainly, you know, talked to A.J. Hinch, who I know well about, you know, his time in Detroit. And, you know, obviously he was with Davey in, in, in Washington. And so we have there's a lot of people that he's been around that, that we know well that we can talk about with him. But ultimately we know the person. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like it is a, it is a nice story. When I said that, when I called him after the trade, it was, it was nice you're talking to someone you know and you knew when you were a kid and you sat in, you know, development meetings with and, you know, whatever, 2012 and 13. So uh, that was that was really nice. And like I said, it was it's the fact that uh, we traded him on a deadline and then traded for him back. It was, did feel like some things in this, some things are kind of coming full circle. I you're kind of weighing the decision of what direction to go and Sunday you, you know which direction you're going. Have you been already discussing kind of both sides with other teams? Have, have you been laying the green? groundwork with the Candelario stuff and maybe even selling stuff and then you go full bore with buying? Yeah. I mean, I, you have to sort of play both sides and, you know, I'd say for the last two weeks, you're talking to GMs all the time. And so, yeah, there was definitely conversations that went on that we were, you know, they were asking about, you know, the players that we were going to have available. And, um, it was interesting though. We talked about when the decision was made, um, more and more as we got in towards deep in last week, other teams were calling. They're like, you're not selling, you know? And so I think people stopped, stopped taking us seriously um, as a uh, as a seller. They're like, come on, you guys are good. You guys are going to buy. So, um, but we had, we had, the, we had those, you have to have those conversations. You have to lay the groundwork for everything. You can't, you can't sort of jump in cold and have those talks. And so we were sort of on, on both sides um, going back several weeks. And you mentioned prospect depth and being obviously willing to dip into that too make additions um, I guess what does that tell you about what the player development staff has done right the last couple of years as far as turning around the farm system and, and adding that depth to it yeah no I mean it's, I mean I'm super proud of where we are I think that you know depending on what publication you look at we've definitely put ourselves like definitely in that that top group and I think with our system it's mostly about how deep it is and uh, you know I think when you look at the the one loss records in the minors you look at the stuff and the strikeout rates and all those different things that we've done I think that we've we've turned it around now we have to take that and we have to turn that into um you know a good major league team and we have to turn that into you know making trades for for major league players I mean ultimately um it's all well and good what you have in the system you have to you, know, you have to convert that but I think we're starting to see that process when you see these guys coming up and um it is nice just to feel as an organization that we're really healthy um and I think that uh, we can we can use that uh, that health both in the big leagues and in trades for for a number of years and I, and I do have a lot of confidence when we trade guys that you know both you know in, in drafting and in player development that will replenish that quickly and I think that's really important Chad, how, how do you determine after he, he hasn't played first base in three years that he's good enough to do it and was that a big part of the conversation or do you just like let's bring the bat and we'll figure it out kind of yeah well, we know the the, the bat lengthens our lineup considerably you know I felt like watching us play um you know we've had a lot of success against left-handed pitching uh, I really wanted to find uh, a left-handed bat to kind of balance this out a little bit um Talkman's done a fantastic job for us and and, and help help that process but adding another one um was really important um 
I, we know he can play first. I, you know, he, he might he probably get, get better as he uh, you know as he as he does it more. But his de- defense at third this year has been much improved, um, so that wasn't a huge concern. Um, but he'll play a lot of third base too. And um, you know, one of the things is that you know when I thought about how the pieces fit together, you're also thinking like we're going to have injuries. I mean, we we're playing for two more months. You can't you can't go get uh, you know guys on waivers anymore. So um, let's make, let's add depth. Like there's, sometimes the pieces don't, don't always fit perfectly on August first as you put it together. But you know inevitably uh, depth is so incredibly important. And I want to make sure that as we're playing into September that you know you're not uh, relying on guys that shouldn't be you know playing in a pennant race. What do you say about Bellinger? Is someone who has played so well in each of his games? Uh, was one that you were uh, talking about a lot and how just he's. Yes. You know, he, he, he was popular in my early conversations. Um, um, now he's been, I mean, I can say he's been everything we expected, but he's been even better than we expected. I mean, he's played like he, you know, he's played like he did in kind of 18, 19, and 20 for the, you know, for the Dodgers. He's been, he's been fantastic. And, um, he's also just, you've, you've seen how he interacts with our players, you know, how he is in the clubhouse, how, how he is out you know, on the team. Um, he's a huge part of, of you know, kind of why we have so much confidence in this team is I, I feel like he's, you know, you know, he's a huge part of it. He's, he's, um, you know, just fit in perfectly. And, um, you know, that was a really easy decision, you know, to, to keep him here. And, um, it's been a lot of fun to watch him. And I'm, I'm really you know, honestly proud of him. Like the way he, we signed him and the next day he was at the complex working and he did not you know take a day off other than, um, you know, I think the one the one time I knew he was gone from the complex, he was going to Louisville Slugger to do a bat fitting. I mean, he was totally focused on on this this year, and all that hard work paid off. And you know, all the hard work that he and Dustin Kelly did from the first day when he got to you know when he, when he signed him has it, been pretty amazing. So uh, he deserves a ton of credit for you know having this kind of resurgence. What about plan for Jose Quas? Are you going to send him to just let him pitch at Iowa? Are you going to Un- work with him? Or- unclear. I mean, we're talking about that right now. Yeah. Stroman Ross said that obviously if he's pitching and he's healthy that at this point of the year everyone yeah is feeling the stuff and I'd imagine the trade rumors probably maybe weighed on him I guess what's your level of concern now that you've kind of bought in to this team of him being the pitcher that he was yeah um my concern on him over the course of the next two months I think he's going to pitch really well um I think he's he's you know like a lot of guys I think he's dealing with some some nagging stuff and you know that's that's what happens over the course of a long season but i think he's, i think he'll get back to um i think he'll get back to where he was i mean when i look at you know you look at um even this you know this season you know jameson struggled early he's been pitching really well drew pitched great early he hasn't pitched as well stroh was great early and he's had some struggles I, this is the nature of it i think sometimes when, when it's pitchers we were very focused on it because they only pitch every fifth day and hitters do that all the time hitters kind of go up and down during the during the course of uh the season but i think when you look at stroh's track record um i have no doubt that you know kind of once he gets through this that he'll uh he'll pitch really well would say uh, i mean that's another guy that's kind of struggling is that something like are you seeing signs that he can kind of turn around or what yeah he'll definitely turn around but you know, he's struggling and there's always someone that's someone in the lineup that, that's that's going through it and uh you know he is right now um you know, hopefully that you know we kind of lengthen the lineup out. Hopefully that can take some pressure off them. But um, you know, I, I was saying that you know different guys struggle at different times, and you hope that you know different guys carry you at different times too, right? We've had a lot of different guys get really hot and sort of carry us for a period, and I hope to say it does that at some point in the next two months. You've been keeping tabs on uh, Keegan Thompson. Is he figuring things out? Yeah, his last outing was good. Um, the, the hope is he keeps progressing. Um, you know, he's a big part of our plans coming into the year. He threw great last year. Uh, obviously, he's had his struggles, but um, the hope is that he can uh, he can regain it and find it and, and be a big part of it because that would be a, a really good addition for us in the, um, the second half. Do you feel good about your chances of re-signing Belly now that uh, he's going to be around the rest of the year? Uh, Belly knows how we feel about him, uh, that's for sure. Um, we've loved having him here, and... Um, um, I don't comment on negotiations in season, um, but I would, I would say that he knows how he knows how we feel about him. He's been been wonderful, and um, it's been a I think it's been a really good really good fit. <laughs>